Hey guys, here remember American Crime Story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, Episode 7, Conspiracy Theories, and obviously I was really looking forward to this episode. You guys know I've been loving this show, and uh, this episode was definitely different from the past two, because while the past two focused on, you know, specific characters, this was back to focusing on the plot and the crime itself, which was still fine, but I will admit it was a bit of a step down from the previous two episodes, but I still thought this was an amazing episode. Definitely still, you know, great episode, nothing wrong with it really, just saying because of the way the last episode focused on characters, Characters and show what the show was capable of. This went back to focusing on the crime, which is just as interesting and did have some very compelling scenes. But let's just get into this episode because we now have four episodes left and. At this point, of course, we know how the case is going to play out, but I don't really know what's going to happen to all these characters and things like that. But let's just get into this episode. We start off with Shapiro. He says good morning to Gil, and he doesn't respond, and that's understandable. Gil does not really want to talk to him right now, and then says that they barely recovered from the Rodney King trials two years ago, and now him and Cochran are staying in a goddamn pool of gasoline, playing matches. It's all going to happen again, and it's all on him. And, you know, between them lying about the story, between them blame fabricating things with Marsha and things, Things like that, um, and just everything that's going on, you know, he's really upset, and they're not really doing anything about it, and Shapiro says it's Cochran's fault, but Gil is not having it, he feels that, you know, Shapiro hasn't tried to stop Cochran, so really, that's not an excuse, and I do agree with Gil, that Shapiro has no excuse for saying that, because he hasn't tried to stop Cochran, he hasn't done anything, so to Gil, that means nothing. So Shapiro's then asked about questioning Furman on using the M-word. Is it based on something he knows or his views on the LAPD in general? And he says the LAPD is a terrific organization. He thinks that there's just a few bad apples out there. And uh, Gil is quite upset with this. You know, he doesn't want them to continue this whole... Um, bashing the police sort of situation. You know, he thinks it's going to end up really badly for them. That's what happened with the Rodney King trials, and he feels the same thing's going to happen now. So Marsha then arrives with another new hairstyle, which Gil commented on. Literally, after she's cut her hair, she now has another new hairstyle, which I think looks fine to her. I think it looks even better than the one before. And she tells him never to mention it again, ever. It's clear that she does not want to let this stuff get to her, and she wants to focus on the case. She does not want to focus on her personal life, and it's a good scene. You can see that, you know, Gil wants to help her and wants to be nice to her, but she doesn't really want to hear right now. And then we get this really interesting scene with Dershowitz and his team. We haven't seen Dershowitz in a while, but we see Dershowitz and his team. They're watching Cochran, and Dershowitz says it might sound like Cochran's fishing, but he understands what they have to do, present alternate theories that do not include their client. And that's basically what the steps was. It was a lot of conspiracy theories, and I like that. And basically, he says, um, you know, they have to provide a narrative, not just in the courtroom, in the world. And remember, that's what Cochran said they had to do. They had to provide the best story possible. And Cochran asks Lang if he feels that he has turned over every possible rock and search for the real killer in the case before rushing to charge Simpson, and Lang says that he does. And this is a good subject that I'm glad they talked about in this episode, because we haven't really gotten to the idea of, we know that Simpson's a suspect, but there are no other suspects out there. And finally, it seems like they're really starting to focus on that, and I like that. And Dershowitz says the media wants narrative too, but they want to be entertainment, and what's out in the world goes back into the courtroom. Which is very much what's going on with Marsha, what's going on with Cochran, what's going on with a lot of them right now. And if there's going to be a media circus, they need to be the ringmaster. Like, for example, how um, Cochran is the ringmaster for the Dream Team. Marsha, I think, is kind of the ringmaster for the other team. But at this point, I feel like Darden's more um, in charge, which I'll get into. He says this could work. Facts is something about Cochran and a Colombian necktie. Cochran asks Lang to tell the court why he refused to look for any other suspects, and Ito says to please refrain from badgering the witness, and Cochran agrees. Cochran asks Lang if it's possible that the murderers could be that the murders could be drug-related. Marsha objects it because it's ridiculous. I mean, there's no way that's true, and remember, she knows for sure that Simpson did. She has evidence and everything. Ito tells Cochran he's being too vague. Cochran asks if he's heard of a Colombian necktie, and I haven't heard of this either, so honestly, Lang not hearing it, I'm not surprised about because I haven't heard of it either. He says he has, and Cochran is surprised that it's a well-known technique. Cochran explains the idea is that the drug gang slash a person's throat so viciously that they are almost removing the victim's head, which, you know, that's crazy. And there's his team applaud, co applaud Cochran for this. Lang basically apologizes for never hearing about the Colombian necktie after word, and Marsh is surprised that he didn't know that Mezzaluna was a cleverly disguised front for the gatherings of cocaine kingpins, and that Faye owed the money and some deals she was mixed up in, and the drugs decided to kill Nicole to scare, and there's a major cartel and major B minus Bremwood eatery right under his nose, and she obviously is, you know, making this up. She thinks it's just desperate flailing, and she hopes that they keep that kind of unsubstantiated bullshit up, and because it's not true, obviously. It's not possible. They're just trying to create a more interesting story to get 
the public to listen and to get them on their side, and it's clear that, you know, that's not what's going on. So Darden says it's all stupid, but it lands, and the jury's believing it, and he says that there are theories everywhere, and everyone loves to hear them talked about, so when the defense comes in with something exotic, it makes the jury sit up and listen. And instead of playing tic-tac-toe with themselves or flat out fall asleep, you know, they actually get to listen to this story, and, you know, the jury has, like, the hardest, um probably mission of all, which that is the next episode. It's all about the jury, which I'll get into. He says they have heard evidence and they razzle dazzle a bunch of conspiracy nonsense into big moments. They need to make their own big moments to fly with the jury. That is how they beat this and they need to focus on that. And Lang and Van Adder agree and Lang says they'll see what they can find and leave and uh, basically Darden asks if he hijacked the meeting. Marcia says that he didn't. She liked it. And we really start to see these two getting a lot closer in this episode, which I'll get into. But we do also focus a lot more on Robert in this episode, which I was very happy because we haven't really seen a lot of Robert uh, since episode 4. That's really been the last episode where Robert's done a lot, and this episode, you know, we got to see a lot of how he feels about this case, which I really enjoyed. Robert asks Cochran why there hasn't been a realistic theory about who did it or any evidence, and right away we see what Robert wants to do. You know, he wants to do whatever he can to defend Simpson. Even though he knows Simpson could have done it, you know, he doesn't think he could because obviously Simpson's the best friend, and he's trying to defend him and everything, and that's why he's in this case, but there's no other theories out there, you know, it's just Simpson, and anyone else is saying it's not him, there aren't any other theories. And he says he knows it's what they're saying, but he has trouble with the blood in the Bronco knowing the Furman or anyone could have planted it. Sim Sims, Nicole's, and Goldman's. And Cochran says they don't have the whole police force out there chasing leads, and they need to be patient, and sooner or later the truth will come out. It always does. And, uh that eventually it's going to happen. But I don't know if that's really true. I mean, Cochran's not telling the truth, remember. Cochran is telling a complete lie, and he's just trying to fabricate this story because it's working for them, and they need to stick with it to defend, um, you know, Simpson as best as they can. So Cochran's kind of being a hypocrite here. So Co Carl comes in, tells them they need to turn on the TV because Barbara is on A Current Affair with Patricia, which I guess was a popular, like, talk show at the time. I don't really know. They turn on the TV, and it's clear there they're trying to make Cochran look like the abuser, and he furiously turns it off, and we basically realize that now. I thought in the previous episode that Cochran himself was abused. That's kind of what I saw, but you see here that Cochran clearly was the one that abused his previous wife, and he asks who's behind it. He thinks it's Shapiro, and that would make sense. Shapiro's out to get him. He would probably be the one behind it, it just would make sense. So Denise then shows Van Adder and Lang, and we do see Denise again in this episode, which I was happy about. She shows Van Adder and Lang what remains of Nicole's stuff in her house, and her daughter asks if they're helping her father find the man who hurt her mother. Lang goes along with it and says her father's busy working on other things today. Denise tells her daughter to let them work, and again, you have to feel bad for the children, because they don't really know what's going on, and they don't really understand it. So basically... He said that they search through boxes, find a manila envelope containing a report that shows Nicole bought the gloves at Bloomingdale's on December 18th, 1990. She walked in the store, bought two pairs of their gloves, and Darden and Marsha are overjoyed because now they have this evidence. They have evidence that says that, um, you know, it wasn't Simpsons gloves and that it couldn't have been Simpsons gloves and that they they don't fit him and everything. And Marsha says this is not a story. This is hold car proof and the gloves are their conviction and that will make sure that Simpson does in fact go to jail. So obviously, you know, they're trying trying to make sure that Simpson goes to jail, and now they feel like they have the evidence, they feel like everything's great here, and, you know, I was happy for them, definitely, that they actually have this evidence, but you know it's not going to be that easy, we have three episodes left, and we know, of course, the Cochran and Shapiro and, you know, Lee and people like that, they're going to stir up trouble, and they're going to try to make up something to go against them. So at court, Marsha waits for Cochran and tells Darden that she can't wait to see how he reacts to the gloves. Tons of press interview Cochran about his abuse, and he says he only wants to talk about Simpson and leave his personal life out of it. You know, Simpson, Nicole, or Goldman, nothing else, and... I thought it was good that Cochran did that, because, you know, before it seems like Cochran didn't care, really, about the media circus and everything, but here, he really, you can tell, does not want to talk about this. He wants nothing to do with it, and Marcia says she needs a vacation, like, now, and Darden says he's driving up to Oakland this weekend with his friend, and asks if she wants to come along, then realizes she might be busy, but she tells him that Gordon has the kids this weekend, and agrees to go to Oakland, and I like this. I like that she finally gets to go away, and we get some nice scenes with them, which we'll get into. Shapiro then comes in. Cochran um, asks what he has has on his lapel, and Shapiro says it's a police solidarity pin, and Cochran tells him to take it off, realizes that the abuse is all from him, pretty much that's what he's thinking here, and Cochran tells him to take it off in front of the cameras, to which Shapiro says he is in no position to tell him what to do in front of cameras, because of the fact that Cochran has gone on to do all these press conferences, and Cochran is now being accused of things, and Cochran doesn't get to have a say there, and Cochran said all those things to Marsha, things like that, and Shapiro hasn't really gotten to do anything, and I mean, Shapiro, you know, is, is a control freak, definitely 
definitely, and he wants control, and I think Cochran does too, but just in a different way. And Cochran tells him basically to tell it tells Dale it was Shapiro playing the story. He doesn't know how, but he'll find out. And we get this really great scene between Cochran and Dale. Up till now, everything between these two has been completely playful. It's been a nice relationship. It's been kind of something fun to see. But we really see in this episode that his relationship with Dale is actually kind of becoming this whole thing is becoming a real detriment to his relationship with Dale, which I thought was very interesting. He assures Dale she'll never hear another word about it. He says she knew all about him when they got married, and she says she did, but her family didn't. Even her pastor didn't. And this really upsets her. You know, she had to keep this hidden, and now she can. There's no way he can fix it all of his stuff with Barbara. It is now in court records, and he made the world a stage. He won the attention, and now he has it. No one, and I love what she said, that nobody said anything. It's been out there. You can see it, and there's nothing you can do about that. And she walks out of the bedroom, and I kind of feel like they're done, honestly. It doesn't seem like things are good between Dale and Cochran anymore, and I honestly feel that Dale's gonna leave him. Maybe if Cochran fixes this, I don't know, but right now, Dale's really upset and can't really be with Cochran right now. So Shapiro tells Robert about the gloves the DA's discovered, and Robert isn't so sure they're the same gloves, and this is very interesting. Shapiro says he has to let them talk to everyone about a plea. If they go in there with the glove thing, they will absolutely kill them, and once it's done, they will have no chance to cut a deal, and Robert thinks that that's crazy, that they shouldn't cut a deal, and Shapiro tells me that he's telling him this because he may have a potential stake in this. With the bag, Simpson's bag, they might have, that he might have disposed with a murder weapon, and that's what people are thinking, that he had Simpson's bag, that it might have been with a murder weapon, and Shapiro says he wouldn't do that, that it was just Simpson's garment bag that he gave him when he moved in, and Shapiro says if he does have possession of the weapon, and he decides to suddenly turn it in, he doesn't know, he guesses at most it would be an accessory after the, accessory after the fact, he get five years out in two, but he doesn't think he can convince them that he didn't know it was in the bag, because clearly, um, you know, they're thinking that it was, he had the bag and everything, it's, it's on, you know, video and everything, there's really no way to disprove it, and Robert asks what he's doing, Shapiro tells him no more talking because this is starting to be a conflict of interest, and you can really tell that this is something that Robert does want to stop, and he really wants to put a stop to this, but he can't really do anything about it. Cochran then comes in, asks him if they're ready. Robert says something's come up, and he has to go. He will catch up later, and you can tell this is really affecting Robert, and I really love the way the scene was done with Robert. Like I said, David Schwimmer, I think, has been one of the best performances out of everyone, and I think John Travolta's really getting good. Like, a lot of people said in the beginning he wasn't great, but I think as the show goes on, he's really starting to understand the character more. Cochran asks what it's about. Shapiro says possible developments, and Cochran asks he cares to share. Shapiro says he doesn't want to want you at this time, and it's clear they're going to keep this private. They don't want to, you know, talk about what's going on here, which I thought was interesting that Shapiro did that. I thought Shapiro would tell him straight out, but no, he actually wants to keep this private. So Robert and AC, who we haven't seen AC in a long time. We haven't seen AC, I think, since episode two. I'm glad we saw him again because it shows that AC is still out there. He's still at the apartment. He's not been arrested, and He's there because they're looking at the bag, and AC asks if no one asked about it, and Robert says he didn't want to open it alone. He's the only one that goes with them, and AC says he did the right thing, asks if he wants him to open. Robert opens the bag. There's nothing there, and AC says it's further proof that he didn't do it because he knows for sure that Simpson didn't do it. I mean, this is just the proof, and Robert asks who he thinks did do it, and I like what Robert brings up here. We, this is really an incredible scene. I mean, out of all the scenes of Robert, this really, I think, was the scene that shows he really is in the worst position of them all. I mean, many of them are. Marsh is in a very bad position, of course, with their kids, but Robert especially, I mean, he has to do some intensive research we see here. He says it's really hard. The kids at school tease his son Rob, and AC says he knows a hard time, but he will get through it. Robert tells him he doesn't understand. He's really struggling. Even when it seems everyone stopped working to look for who did it, he's still working with everything he knew about Nicole and what he can learn and everything he can learn about Goldman. And there's never been more, you know, media or detective coverage or, you know, policemen or anything like that. There's never been more of it about one crime ever but for whatever reason, there's no other suspect or answers. Nothing else but Simpson, but Simpson. You know, there's really no one. And Robert says, you know, of course, you know, AC's asking what he meant by that. And Robert says he didn't mean it like that. But you can tell this is really annoying him, which honestly, I think Robert has a good point. Because this is such a big crime, why isn't there more theories? Why aren't more people thinking of other possible suspects? They shouldn't. They aren't. Because everyone's made it seem like Simpson's the only option, which clearly he isn't. There are other options. And I like that Robert tried to say 
say that. You know, there are other options out there. Don't just listen to the media and try to come up with other suspects because it's clear that no one is because they just want to go with the idea that Simpson is the one that did it, which he might not be. So Shapiro visits Simpson in prison, asks where everyone is, realizes he wants a one-on-one -on -one talk, and Simpson asks where his pin is, and Shapiro says it was just a political position. He then asks why he constantly tries to undermine Cochran, which I love that Simpson finally asks this because we've seen that Shapiro and Cochran have been at odds for episodes. You know, they don't get along. They've tried to throw each other in the bus. Shapiro didn't really have a say in the last episode. And here it's clear that Shapiro is targeting Cochran. And he then asks, you know, why he tries to do this crossing the quarterback. He says he does, he sees as does, he sees it as does everyone. It's palpable. And he asks him what he's up to. And Shapiro says that Cochran and him have his differences, but they're clearing things up. But he's glad they're discussing this because he thinks the whole wild LAPD conspiracy theory they're discussing this, um, that, and the whole LED conspiracy theory is not a good idea. And Simpson reminds him that he came up with this idea, that he has no, I that he has no right to say this is a bad idea because he came up with it. And Shapiro says he came up with a bad apple. But Simpson says that it was all him, and he should not just go pinning the blame on others, because that's clear, that's what Shapiro wants to do. He wants to make it seem like, you know, Cochran's guilty, and he just wants to pin on everyone, and won't admit that he's in the wrong here. And Shapiro reminds him this is why he came in first, and Simpson gets the guard, tells him he needs to think hard and fast if he wants to stay on the team, because if he keeps this up, there won't be any room there for him. Which, yeah, I mean, you can st start to see that there really isn't at this point. I mean, Cochran has all these ideas, and Leah's all these ideas, and even, I think, Dershow has ideas who we're not seeing a lot of but he's even you know thinking of stuff and Shapiro at this point is not really helping them at all he's just kind of making things worse and even Simpson is starting to get in on the case you can tell so Marsha and Darn arrive in Oakland and I love this scene because in such an intense show we don't get a lot of fun scenes but that's exactly what this was and I love this because not only was it Marsha's break away from the case it was also our relief really we didn't have to see someone you know really you know emotional that the case is still going on and still talking about. Yes, there's talking the case in this scene, but it's a lot more fun, and I like the way this was done here. Marsh and Darn arrive in Oakland for his friend Byron's birthday party. They both have a great time relaxing away from the case. However, as the nice proceeds, talk of the case starts, and you can see that they are on Simpson's side, but Marsha drunkenly shows them with shot glasses, which I thought this was really cool. Sarah Paulson, again, really sold it here. She shows with shot glasses her theory about what happened, showing she thinks that Simpson is the killer, which by far, this was the highlight of the episode. Like, out of any scene, this was definitely the highlight. She shows Shows that she thinks Simpson's the killer, and the guys tell Darden to now be, and basically that you know she thinks that Simpson's the killer. They don't think that, but she thinks that. I thought that was a very well done scene, and. She basically proves all the evidence, and the guys then tell Darden that tonight would be the night to have sex with Marsha. He thinks that Darden likes Marsha more, and I said it as well. I think Darden really sees Marsha as more than that, but Darden admits that she's, you know, is, you know, just saying, oh, she's just my co-worker and nothing more, but they don't see it that way. They really see more for them, and that he really does like her, and after the party, Marsha says that she's coming back next weekend, with or without him, and Darden says his friends would probably prefer it the way, that way they get to her apartment, and right when it seems like they're about to kiss, Darden shuts sit down with a good night, probably because he doesn't want anything to happen, because he knows how intense the case is, he knows how crazy things are, she closes the door, and Darden just has this look in his face, he's disappointed, I think because he wishes that it w it could have gone different, like he could have kissed her, or something could have happened between them, I think he just wishes that they were in a different position, because it's clear that he's falling in love with Marsha, but it's also maddening because of this case, and he can't really do anything about it, because of the fact that things are just crazy right now, and right away we see that these these two cannot be together. I mean, the show makes you think that maybe they can be together, but then this scene shows why exactly it would be a terrible thing to get Darn and Marsha together. Not that I wouldn't want them together. In that scene, yes, definitely, but here it shows that they are just too different, you see. Darn says to Marsha that they should just go for it, and, make, and when he said that, of course, Marsha's thinking about dating. That's what she's thinking he's talking about. But then he goes right back to the case, and I think Marsha's kind of upset because he's focused on work, and he doesn't really want to do anything about the relation, which I kind of feel Marsha's ready to dive into, and, you know, he didn't really do anything about it. So he says they should make some input on the glove, they need a big moment, and she says she decided it's not a good idea at all, and not the right time if it were, and he says now would be the only time. He says the idea of Simpson just staying there in front of the cameras and Jerry wearing the gloves would be a great idea. Marsh says they're going downstairs to get their conviction today. They have his gloves with all of the DNAs, everybody's blood, the fibers, all of it, and they have a receipt that proves he did it. They're done. She doesn't know why he wants to ask the deal for another card. He says because he knows it's an ace, and she says he doesn't, you know, he thinks that this is a good idea, that this will show right away that Simpson is the person, you know, is in fact, um, 
you know, the killer and that he did, it is his gloves. And Marsha's saying, no, 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 we have all the evidence that says it's not actually him. And she says he doesn't. He turns over the deal for another card. He doesn't really know what's going to happen. And uh, I like what Marsha says, that he really doesn't know what's going to happen. So he should probably just shut this down before something bad happens here. So Shapiro's at the trial, tries on the gloves himself, which obviously didn't happen, but, you know, because of the show and the way Shapiro is, he and it's clear that Shapiro, he wants to do something monumental, because of course, Simpson said, I want you to do something, you're not contributing anything to the team, and it's clear here that he wants to. He then realized that they're too small, and he then asks the Dream Team if they're interested in something other than a conspiracy theory, shows some real evidence, and tells him that the gloves are simply too small, and, and Shapiro thinks he should try them on in court, and Robert says it's a s terrible idea, and might not work, and Cochran says he doesn't get to make a play if he doesn't know the outcome, and he says he does. Simpson says his hand is bigger than Shapiro's, and to put him in, and Carl asks how they were presented. Lee says they don't, they don't, they get the DA to present it, and uh, basically that's exactly what happens. Darden brings up trying on the gloves, and Marsh tells him this is her case, and when she says drop it, he drops it. You know, he is not focusing on that, but Lee says he had the balls of a stud, feel mouse, and he, he, if he doesn't tell him to try on the gloves, he will, and uh, basically Darden is forced to pretty much to get him to try on the gloves, and Cochran tells Ito he doesn't like what's about to happen, and if Simpson chooses to testify, they should decide to let him try on the gloves, that's fine, and Ito says Darden can ask for whatever he wants to ask for, and if he can and if and he can object if he wants to, but when Darden asks Simpson to try them on, Cochran says they have no objection, Simpson tries on the gloves, and like Shapiro suspected, they're too small, they do not fit him, and... Darden tells him to straighten his finger and make a fist with his right hand. Darden says he has nothing further. Darden then tells Marsha that something is not right. He kept his finger still, but Marsha is pissed. She she is obviously upset. She doesn't want to hear that, uh, you know, this is wrong because she knew it was going to turn out badly and she she told Darden straight out this was not going to work. He went against her and obviously they're kind of at odds right now, which I like because things have been relatively calm between these two. Now it's time to get crazy and now it's time for these two to definitely face some drama and and, you know, it shows that Darden is not perfect. He's definitely flawed. He's not going to do everything that Marsha told him. And this is something that he really wanted to do. He didn't care what anyone thought. He just wanted to try it. It didn't work. And basically, you know, he thinks that something's not right. And he, we see he's watching the footage intensively of Simpson wearing the gloves, knowing that something is wrong. You know, he doesn't know if Simpson hiding is something. But he knows that those gloves definitely fit Simpson and that he was faking it. And he calls Fred Goldman, of all people. I don't know why, but he does. Probably because Fred... Fred Goldman was on the jury, and he tells me, sorry about what happened today, but it's not over yet. They will come back from this, and he shouldn't call him, and he should call him back anytime. He pretty much is, seems like he's going to do this on his own, and that's where the episode ends. So like I said, kind of a depressing episode, because things are not good between Darden and Martian now. I don't know if they're going to maybe patch things up in the next episode, but I don't think it's going to last forever, but definitely right now, they're in a, very, in a very bad spot, and I hope things work between Darden and Marsha. You know that these two are not going to get together, but it seems like Darden does like Marsha, and it's kind of the problem that he can't like Marsha. He needs to understand that, you know... Uh, they are just too different. I think he knows that now, and that's one of the reasons why he's so upset about this, because he didn't listen to Marsha, and he knows that, you know, he didn't want to, but he should have, and that was the right thing to do. Not, Marsha's not always right, but in this case, she was right that trying on the gloves wasn't a good idea. So, Simpson was clearly faking something. We don't really know what he was faking, but I think that's very interesting to see where that's gonna go, and, you know, what he's faking there. Um, Cochran and Dale, is this really the end of them? I mean, can Cochran keep this secret, and, you know, how is this, what's gonna happen with Dale and everything, and we saw that Dale was very worried about what was going on, you know, with Cochran and how it seemed like this is the end of them, but I don't know, maybe this isn't the end of Cochran and Dale, what do you guys think, I'm very interested in what's gonna happen with that, um, as far as the whole thing goes with, um, you know, Robert, I really do feel bad for Robert, because there really seems like there are no other possible suspects, he's gonna try to find other possible suspects, but right now there really aren't any, because no one's really looking into it, and I think that's very interesting where that's going, so Robert, like I said, I really do feel bad for the guy because he's trying to look for possible suspects and it doesn't really seem like there is anyone so that really sucks as well um Let's talk about Shapiro, because it's clear Shapiro wants to get involved, but he really doesn't seem like he's doing much of anything. I mean, it was Dar it was Darden's idea in the first place to get um, Simpson to try on the gloves, and of course Shapiro didn't know that, but Shapiro kind of, I think, credited it as his idea, and they were overjoyed when he didn't try on, when the gloves didn't fit, because of course they're winning, and you know now the DA is losing, which the DA, I think, was winning before, but now they're definitely losing, and uh, it's really sad to see, definitely. And like I said, there is no right or wrong 
on side here, but the DA definitely, you have to feel bad for them. I mean, they had such concrete evidence. They had everything that proved that Simpson was guilty, and now, you know, we can see that the other side is winning, and obviously they're really upset about that, and you can understand why, and I honestly do really feel bad for them because of that. Um... But overall, guys, great episode as usual. Definitely really did enjoy the way this episode is going. Let me know if you guys saw this episode. Love to hear your thoughts on it. We'll see you guys in the next video, which will be for episode 8 of American Crime Story. People are so Simpson. One, have one episode left, and uh, then it will be officially catched up, caught up, which I'm very happy about. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.